Hi, it's Adam back from the Rubik's Cube, and today I have an unboxing from the Cubicle. So I am very excited for this. It has been quite a while since I've unboxed some new hardware. I, I've had a few unboxings here and there, but for the most part, I haven't consistently kept up with new cubing hardware for a couple of years now. So in this package, I have some of the newer Diane Speed Cubes, and I'm actually very excited because I'm a bit of a Diane fan myself. Just over here, if I bring you over here to my shelf, you can see that I have some Diane cubes back here. I have a bit of a collection going on. At one point in time, I wanted to have a full Diane collection of speed cubes. This is definitely adding towards that end goal with some of the newer 3x3s. So before we take a look at the package, I thought we can look at my current Diane collection. So this is the Diane 1 Tyan. Um, I think it's actually pretty good. I mean, obviously it's a very early speed cube, so it has a lot of problems, but for its time, I think it's actually a pretty good puzzle. Um, this is, I think I got it from TPC, so thank you to Allison. Um, and then next over here, this is definitely one of my prized possessions. This is a Guhong, but it's a POM plastic Guhong. So the Guhongs were created in three plastics. I'm not exactly sure the names of all of them. There's original plastic, and I think the newest version is like ABS or something like that. But this is POM plastic, which was a harder plastic in between original and the new ABS. I was able to get my hands on one a while ago from uh, speed solving forums when I was trying to collect all the Diane puzzles. Yeah, it's definitely not a great cube or anything, but it's an important part of cubing history, and it's definitely uh, a rare puzzle to find. Next, we have some Zanchis. So this. Zanchi right here is my first speed cube, if you don't count the uh, Sheng Shao Wind, which was terrible because I ruined it with the WD-40. But um, yeah, I consider this my first speed cube, and I got some signatures on it here. And then we have various other Zanchis. Yeah, this is a smaller stickless version, and then this is the 42 millimeter, even smaller one. Uh, I think I got this one from Ava, so thank you to her. Um, I think I also got this one from Ava. This is... Um, I know they come in four sizes. If you know the sizes, let me know down below, but this is one of the other sizes. And then here's a version online that comes black stickerless. So I decided to get it just to fill in the blanks. It's not really a different puzzle. I just think the black stickerless is really cool. And then over here, we have some very interesting things. This is a original plastic Diane 2x2. Two two. Um, you could tell by the black internals, the black screw. I never used it for 2x2. Two two. I think it's definitely a cool piece of hardware to have for a Diane collection because they are pretty highly sought after. That adds to my collection of uh, cubes with cool plastics, Diane cubes with cool plastics. So yeah. And then over here we have something I think is really, really cool. Not because it's good. This is a Panshi. It is terrible. In fact, it like was the end of Diane or at least their original line of speed cubes from um, like 2011, 2012, that, that sort of era when they dominated the three by three market. This was a highly, highly anticipated puzzle and it just absolutely flopped. Um, it's terrible. It, it really, really is. I would genuinely want a speed cube on the tie end over the Panshi. Um, it's just a really clunky puzzle, but I found it online, I think on through CF or speed solving forums in green plastic, which I thought was so cool. So I ended up getting that. So um, yeah, it's kind of a quirky, interesting part of uh, Diane collection. So I think that pretty well establishes that I'm a fan of collecting Diane puzzles. Since the Panchi, they have released, I think, a Zanchi 2018, a Zanchi 2019. I'm not exactly sure in those years. It might be 2019, 2020. And then they did a Guhong V3. And then they did two new puzzles, the Tangyun V1 and recently the Tangyun V2. It seems like they're making a bit of a comeback. These puzzles are definitely actually used. They're competitive. The Tangyun definitely takes plays out of the book of Moyu, um, the dominant 3x3 speed cube producer now. Um, but I, I honestly, and Gan, and Gan too, but I honestly think there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, they were behind the times for a very long time. And they took something that's popular right now and they said, OK, what if we started to produce stuff like the new way? And it seems like they're starting to get back into the game. So I thought it'd be cool to pick up some of the new hardware to add to my collection and try out. All right, here we go. We have a Tang Yun second edition, it says. So this should be the Tang Yun V2. Interesting box. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is a Tang Yun V1. 
And this right here should be Gu Hong V3. So I think a logical order to go in is to start with the Gu Hong. So let's take a look. The Gu Hong, as I mentioned before, first to have torpedoes, very revolutionary puzzle. This is a very important line of speed cubes in speed cubing history. So I'm interested to see what they did with it. It's good to see that old Dian logo again on a new puzzle. Wow. That is actually quite good. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> well, I do know that the Tang Yuns, they're known for being really, really smooth. I think I've even felt one in the past, the V1 when it first came out. And so it seems that Diane, their new approach is to make these really, really smooth feeling puzzles. I don't know if they're doing that on purpose or not. After feeling this cube, which is a piece of hardware I didn't really even know existed, um, it seems to be following that trend. It is incredibly smooth. There are no clicks or any sort of scratchiness or bumpiness at all to the feeling. It is just smooth all the way through a turn. Bit silky, but it's got a nice flow to it. Yeah, I'm not used to those M slices. I'd be interested in seeing what the mechanism looks like. Wow. Okay, cool. So this is a very simplistic design, actually. See, it's very luby, but uh, reminiscent of some old Diane mechanisms. Very simplistic. It's not, it's not trying to do too much. And this over here, uh, this pattern that they have, a lot of people wonder why Gan makes a honeycomb design, and now Diane is implementing this. Uh, the reason why is to increase surface area. So basically, if you add these little divots, it retains lubricant for longer. Also, the divots make it so that there are there's less surface area contacting each other when pieces slide past each other, right? Because uh, there are some holes there. So that wears down the lubricant less over time. Uh, it sort of works both ways. It increases surface area so there's more places for the lube to go and be retained, and it decreases the surface area of contact, which makes the lubricant wear off less. So that's definitely very interesting to see, and um, let's take a look at these corners. I think we'll see a similar pattern going on. Even on the stalk here, there's some ripples or whatnot. I don't know what to call that. Okay, so a few things. Is this brand new? Absolutely not. Gan did it first with a honeycomb, as far as I'm aware. And number two, is it going to make a severe impact? Also, absolutely not. I think, it, like I said, it'll retain lube for a little longer because there's more total surface area for the lube to go and less surface area of contact for the lube to wear off. But is that going to make a major difference? Not really. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this Guhong. It has a simplified design, but it performs really well, and its feeling is very, very smooth compared to a lot of the speed cubes of today. And this is a perfect example of Diane trying to adapt to new technologies and implementing things, like Gan's honeycomb design. Is it blatant stealing? Uh, I think you could argue that. But overall, this is a company that has been very behind with the times, and they're just trying to catch up. And I think by the time we get to the Tangyeon V2, we'll see they're starting to do some of their own thing. So it's not blatant copying like we see with some other speed cube companies that literally just repackage other brands cubes. Gu hung out of the way, let's take a look at their brand new puzzle, the Tang Yun V1. Once again, Diane's making one giant leap forward in their boxes. A, tr a true sign that they're changing with the times. Oh my good god. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look at that window. Wow, okay. Gan showing off, and is this magnetized? Of course it's magnetized, wow. Hey, can't have a good cube without a good box, am I right? Right off the bat, I can see it has black on the outside and white internals, so that gives it a really cool look, actually. And as you guys may know, I am, I, I see Tang Yun's mostly stickerless, but I have always been a fan, and I still am a fan of black puzzles. Okay, this one is definitely not as luby on the outside, which is good. So let's try some turning. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is really, really cool. This is not as smooth as the Guhong V3. Um, it's actually, uh, it, it's got a swishy feel to it. Oh, that was weird. 
I am very impressed. This has a very nice flow to it. It's got a really good speed and the feeling is a lot less smooth. It's not heavily lubricated. It's it's really swishy, which is a nice feeling. I actually quite enjoy that. I may be aging myself in cube years here. This does remind me of one puzzle uh, with the white internals, black outside, swishy feel. It reminds me of a Fang Shi. I don't know if you guys remember that puzzle, but uh, yeah, it, it was known for being very swishy. It was known as the Illusion colorway or whatever, where it was uh, different color internals from the caps. This is a huge step up from the Guhong V3. This is not a simple edge. Now we're talking about triple wings. We got one, two, three, four. I mean, three wings and a torpedo, depending on what you call what, I guess. We got magnets. It's not heavily lubricated. doesn't have that honeycomb. I think they traded the, uh, mag the honeycomb for the magnets, which is definitely a trade-off I think most people would take. This does remind me of a lot of modern speed cubes, uh, especially a GTS V2. So you can see it's still it's got like a similar number of wings. The geometry is pretty similar. The idea being one big wing here, another one this way, and then a torpedo on top. Again, I think this is an example of Diane taking a play out of the book of some modern speed cubes. Did they copy it? No, this is not a copy. It's pretty obvious it's not a copy, but they are trying to get with the times. So I think that's pretty cool. In the corner here, oh, that's interesting. So the magnets are placed here in the corner, and it seems like the stalk has the same exact design as the Guhong V3, actually, with that little rip ripple divot. It's hard to tell on white plastic, but there are two little divots, just like the uh, Guhong V3 had. Overall, I'm pretty impressed so far with the new hardware. Uh, this cube definitely does not rely on heavy lubrication like the Guhong V3 does. This has a smooth feeling a lot because of the, the amount of factory lube in here. And so that makes sense that it has those honeycomb designs or divots to try to retain that lube. This one does not rely on heavy lubrication, so the ridges aren't really needed. Okay, so here we have it in stickerless. These stickerless shades are not bad. I've definitely seen worse stickerless shades. So the first thing I noticed actually is that these center caps, they seem to be a little lowered around the edges. That's quite an interesting design choice. You can also see white internals. The other thing that's glaringly obvious is this little rotation system here. And so this is Diane's attempt to allow customization for their puzzles. So the new paradigm shift in cubing has really been giving the solver the ability to customize the puzzle however they want. And so I'm sure, as you've already seen in other people's videos, this is a little wheel. And so you can spin the wheel to try three different magnet strengths, and it's built into the puzzle already. I think that's a really cool idea. I also think it's a really good sign that Diane's trying to come up with some of their own stuff. It's not just copying their competitors anymore. They're kind of more with the times, which is good to see. Whoa. As with the other cubes, I'm immediately impressed. This is really good. I think of all the puzzles, this has a, definitely the best flow. The moves just seem to flow in, into each other really nice as I mess up a Y perm. Yeah, the puzzle is smooth, but its feeling is, is more sandy than anything. It's not swishy like the V1. It's got that sound a lot of new Moyu cubes feel like. I'm not sure if that'll go away, but Either way, look at this speed. And this is definitely not uncontrollable speed. It's just really, really nice flow. Seems we're on setting two. Similar design where we have one, two, and then a torpedo, three. So this corner here has that ripple design with the two divots on the stalk, just like the previous two puzzles. Interestingly, it seems that we have that wave divot honeycomb type design in addition to a magnet. So it seems like they combined the previous two ideas to sort of retain lubricant. Yeah, this is not a design that's all too different. It seems like the bottom of the stock here is a bit thicker. But other than that, pretty simple standard design. All right, I'm going to be honest here. I really could not be bothered with the customization type 
thing on the new puzzles. I always thought they were kind of hard to figure out, and I never really felt like touching them. And I f- kind of feel the same way about this one. I don't know if I'll play around with the magnet settings that much. I might just to try it. As it is out of the box, I'm enjoying it, and I see no reason why I should switch it up. But overall, I'm very impressed with these. I think all of them bring a unique feeling to the table. Really smooth, swishy, sandy. You can really see the progression of going from simplistic designs here that they're used to in their older puzzles to newer edge designs and center designs here, but also implementing new ideas all along the way. Here, implementing the divot or honeycomb design that Gan had to try to retain lubricant. Here, implementing magnets in a more sophisticated mechanism. And this one is a little bit of both of these. Sophisticated design with magnets, but also that divot to retain some lubricant and the addition of some customization in a brand new way we haven't seen before. So this is really cool to see the progression of Diane's mechanisms. Anyway, big thank you to The Cubicle and Jules at The Cubicle again for sending me these. I appreciate it. And that's about it for this one. Thank you very much for watching.